What is cracking, everybody? Welcome back to the next episode of the next show with your boy Deli Del, Delicio Jones. And on this episode, you guessed it, week three NFL picks. So here we go. Uh, last week, as uh, you all should know from uh, watching previous episodes, I went. Uh, 12 of 15. The week before that, I went 10 of 15. So 22 out of 30. Not too shabby. Uh, and some other stuff going on too in the world of sports. Uh, Lakers, baby, Lakers! Ah! Yeah, they did it, baby. They did it. And now they're going to try and uh, put away the Nuggets. But, uh, you know, some people are like, oh, the, the Nuggets love being down 3 1. So we'll, we'll see if the Lakers have what it takes to actually uh, put them away. But. Um, I mean, 3-1 is a very good position to be in. I don't care what sport you're in. The best of seven series, you know, you're in the driver's seat. You control your own destiny. So uh, it's going to be great to see uh, what the Lakers do, and hopefully they can move forward and go on to the finals. Yeah, so that's great for them. Um, I think the uh, Heat game is in progress, but I'm hoping the uh, Heat win that one and just dispatch of the Celtics already. They're just, they're, they're just really starting to annoy me. Um, them and their putrid fans. So yeah, all that. Maybe if there's a little bit of time after my picks, we'll get into all that. But first and foremost, week three NFL picks. Very interesting week, culminating with uh, a Monday night matchup of epic proportions with the Kansas City Chiefs and uh, the Baltimore Ravens. That one's going to be a really tough pick. So, all right, where do we start here? The first uh, 1 o'clock game I see on the schedule, we got the Chicago Bears, the Bears, against the Falcons. Um, Falcons were in prime position to win last week, and they choked it. And they weren't exactly uh, impressive uh, at home in week one either. Um, you know, and, and I said, you know, they, they've, they've had a recent history of choking at home. Usually, they, it used to be like they were money at home, but uh, recently they, they've had a history of choking. So uh, I'm not I'm not so sure on them. Um, the Bears are on the road. I understand this, and I know they're bound to lose at some point. And I don't know. I think I think Atlanta could win this one. I mean, yes, they they are at home. They still have a pretty explosive offense, and I think they want to sort of quiet all the detractors. You know, because that, that was a pretty embarrassing one-point loss to the Cowboys when, when you had such a big lead. And now everybody's just talking about how you collapsed in the Super Bowl <laughs> so against the Patriots. So, uh, you don't want them to keep talking about that. So, you know what? I think I'm, I'm going to take, take the Falcons. There, there's going to be some, some dogs, some dogs this weekend that are going to be uh, up for grabs that are, that are going to get some wins. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Falcons as a home dog, because that's what they are. Because they looked, uh, yeah, they didn't look good in Week One, and then they just completely choked out the game in Week Two against the Cowboys. So I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the Falcons at home to see if they can right the ship. Okay, next matchup: uh, LA Rams at the Bills. Man, this is gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a good one. Buffalo at home, but I think man. Aaron Donald is just going to murk Allen the way that, like, this guy runs around, sometimes panics in the pocket. It's going to be a close one, man. But I'm, I'm going to take the Rams, yo. I'm going to take the Rams. Sorry, Jesse. I got to take the Rams, homie. Um, so let's see what happens in that one. Uh, next game, the uh, team formerly known as the Redskins taking on the Cleveland Browns. This one should be hilarious, man. Got a couple of teams that uh, are like so overrated, one more than the other, in my opinion, and that would be the Cleveland Browns. I think uh, the Washington Football Team shocked the world. I think that just tells more about how much like the Eagles suck than how good they were. The Browns, I mean, they're the Browns, but they're at home. They're still kind of finding their way with with Mayfield and OBJ. So. I don't know. They're at home, man. I'll, I'll I'll take the Browns. Like Washington still hasn't really gotten it together, in my opinion. I'll take the Browns. Uh, next matchup: the Tennessee Titans 
at the Vikings. This should be a great matchup. Uh, the Vikings really haven't shown up, and Tennessee has been pretty good. I mean, they have a pretty good they have a pretty good defense too, and, and well coached. Um, I think I don't know, man. I think Kirk Cousins. He's just he's looking lost right now with without the without preseason reps and training camps and OTAs and all that stuff. I don't know his timing seems to be off with with Adam Thielen, but the Titans are just you know chugging right along. So I think I'm gonna take the Titans in that one. Uh, next matchup, the Las Vegas Raiders against the Pats. This is another very intriguing matchup. The Raiders are on the road. Uh, so, you know, in Foxborough where New England plays well, I think I think Belichick does well against uh, AFC teams. And I think since they're at home, they have a lot more time to prepare. So, and, and the Raiders have just been kind of a Cinderella story the first couple weeks of the year. So, I'm taking Pats at home. I'm taking Patriots. I know a Jets fan picking the Patriots, eh? But let's be real here, man. If you're if you're in it to win it, you gotta say what's real. Next matchup: Niners at Giants. Um, Niners, man, whether Grapple and all these other injured guys play, I mean, if they can take out the Jets, then they certainly can take out a Giants team without Saquon Barkley. So I'm I'm gonna take the Niners, easy. Uh, Bengals at the Eagles, man. Oh man, this is gonna be so tough to call because, like, Joe Burrow's actually been playing well. And right now the Eagles are just like so trash right now. And this is this is why I said this is why I said there's gonna be a lot of dogs this weekend. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna take the Bengals, man. I'm gonna do it because the Eagles have just been trash. I'm sorry. Until the Eagles can prove to me in a week or in a game that they're not trash, I'm gonna consider them trash. And I'm gonna pick against them every time because. If I were betting, man, it's made me money already. That's one of that's one of the games I always pick is Eagles to lose, and this one should be no different, man. I think Burrow, for some reason, I don't know, I just get the feeling that he's gonna go off, man, because the, the Eagles have been playing like garb. No fans, you know what I'm saying? So I, you know, I don't see much uh, prospects going for them there. Okay, uh, so the next game, Houston Texans at the Steelers. Steelers, man, they're back, yo. And they're normally money at home. So for that reason, I'm going to take them. Clearly, Houston Texans are not what they used to be with uh, D-Hop uh, out of the lineup there. I mean, you know, Deshaun Watson is just, like, looking for guys to, to throw to. But since he doesn't have much time to look and he's worried about getting sacked, he's got to scramble around. And then there's no there's no open targets since there's no open targets right off the bat. It's going to be hard, man. It's going to be hard for Deshaun Watson. Uh, Steelers, man, easy at home money all right next matchup uh the carolina panthers at the chargers um carolina's taking some strides but i think the la chargers they're, they're at home um they still have a pretty good defense i think i think they'll show up I, I like i like the chargers at home i don't i don't know i don't see much with the panthers they're still kind of rebuilding and still sort of like on on the reels of um, Cam leaving and what what dynasty he was there and and sort of the expectations since he did win MVP and he took him to the Super Bowl and all this. So it's going to take a while, man, before they get back to prominence. I like the Chargers in this one, being at home. Okay, next matchup. The Detroit Lions at the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, Lions are not a great road team. Cardinals are a decent home team. Um, I think Kyler Murray seems to be ascending with uh, D Hop and some of the other uh, new weapons that uh, he has at his disposal. Um, I like the Cardinals, man. I think Kyler Murray is, like I said, he's he's ascending. He's on the rise. He's going to be a, a good quarterback, and I think with that uh, uh, Cliff Kingsbury uh, guy as as his coach, he's finding new and innovative ways to sort of like use his uh, Murray, that is his skill set. To you know, extend drives and find open guys and just just get creative with the offense and put up points. So I, I like the Cardinals at home, man, for all those reasons for sure. Okay, next matchup: the Brady Buccaneers against the Denver Broncos. Now Denver's at home, high altitude, yada yada yada. But I mean, Brady's used to that with all the games he played against uh, 
Peyton Manning in Denver and won. So, um, and just, you know, being in the AFC in general. So, I'm going to say uh, Bucks, yo, Brady. He's going to continue to get it done. He had a nice uh, little week, too. Got the win. So, I think he's just going to keep it rolling, yo. Okay. <laughs> Dallas Cowboys at Seattle Seahawks. Yo, Seattle, easy money, yo. Dallas is going to – Dallas – like, that was a miracle win last week, and all the analysts agreed with that. And they're on the road, and they're not very impressive. And Seattle, man, Russell Wilson, they got a stout defense. They got my boy formerly, Jamal Adams, man. How could I not root for the Seahawks in this one? Seahawks, easy money. Book it. Okay. Uh, and then, actually, the last 4 p.m. matchup that we haven't talked about before I get to uh, Packers and Saints here – it's going to be my New York Jets at the Indianapolis Colts. Um, the, the Jets have not done well um, so far. I think Adam Gase is like such a lame duck. I, I, you know what? And I've already said this in, in the chats, okay, and, and, the, and the boards, okay, and the comments and Facebook and everywhere, every sort of outlet that I could speak on this about whether it was a, a, a news story or um, an in-game chat, whatever, okay? I just want to make it very clear that I have said this there too, so what I'm about to say shouldn't be a huge surprise, but for those who haven't heard me say this, Adam Gase is the worst head coach the Jets have ever had. Adam Gase is the worst head coach in New York football Jets history, okay? The worst there's a reason that he got canned from Miami, and you see the kind of things they're doing with with a 37-year-old scrub quarterback that just knows how to, like, throw the football. He just knows how to launch it. But, you know, he gets a bunch of interceptions, too. He did when James Winston and him were in Tampa. They were, they're both getting interceptions. But a 37-year-old quarterback, and you got, you got uh, Darnold sitting there, one of the best young QBs to come out of that draft, and you got him sitting there looking like a scrub. Meanwhile, this 37-year-old journeyman is out here, like, lighting up defenses. Adam Gase is the worst head coach in New York Jets history, and he needs to be fired. And if, if, they, don't, if they don't come out with any kind of, like, competitiveness to start this game, because, like, the Colts aren't uh, some kind of a freaking powerhouse. They're, they're sort of like, you know, maybe mid to below average sort of team, okay? So th they shouldn't really have too much of a hard time putting up points. But it, if this ends up being like – if, if they come out there with no competitiveness and they just lay an egg, they got to fire Gase. Like, it's just getting ridiculous. Got to fire him and because I know they didn't have a preseason, OTAs, whatever, but still – it doesn't matter. Like, other coaches seem to be getting through it, and they seem to be teaching their guys and everything still and winning games. And that's the most important thing. Meanwhile, I don't, I don't know what this guy's doing, man. Like Stephen A. Say, Stephen A. said on ESPN, I don't know if he's, like, high as fuck all the time or, like, what he's doing. But clearly the message is not getting to the, to the players. And, you know, now you have freaking Jamal Adams gone, and – and, you know, who knows? that They might have had a rift in the locker room, too, and that's maybe part of the reason. It's not just about getting paid. Like, the guy wants to be, like, respected, and he wants to be given a chance, okay? And if Gay's just going to, like, mess around and be high as fuck all the time and not coach this team properly and not prepare them the way that they're supposed to be, man, he needs to be gone. Gone! But I digress. That was my uh, little rant there. Because uh, I just wanted to get that off my chest, because I think he's just like such a such a bad coach. It was so bad last year, and this year they just seem to be like an embarrassment, a laughing stock. It's, it's, it's very sad as a Jets fan. Very sad. Okay, so the uh, Sunday night game has uh, the Green Bay Packers at the New Orleans Saints. So the Pack are on the road. Um, I don't know. I think like. New Orleans didn't play that great. Now people, like last week, and now people are asking questions about, um, you know, Drew Brees' uh, health and longevity. He's getting older. And, you know, people are questioning, like, how well he can throw the ball. I don't know. I think he's still a decent quarterback, even though he's older. But 
you know, I'm not going to question the greatness of Aaron Rodgers once again, because like Stephen A says, Stephen A said that Aaron Rodgers is a bad man. So don't doubt this mofo. And I'm not going to like I did before. I did, and then he ended up getting the victory. So I'm not going to doubt his greatness, even though he's uh, on the road. Like I said, I, I said this at the very start of the football season, that he is playing his way to get traded because they drafted some other quarterback. So they think that, you know, this guy's on the decline. And Aaron Rodgers is like, nah, nah, I'm not on the decline. And I'm going to go out there and I'm going to ball. And I'm going to show you guys that I'm the better of the of the more established quarterbacks out there. Some of the more groomed quarterbacks. You know, your, your Roethlisberger, Breeze, Brady, all these other cats, Rivers, all these guys that are still hanging around. You know, Rodgers wants to prove that he's the cream of that crop. And he's doing a great job so far. So I'm not going to doubt his greatness, yo. Pack, easy. All right. And then the Monday Nighter, you got the Kansas City Chiefs and Baltimore Ravens, probably like the matchup of the century already in week three. Um, I don't know, man. Like Baltimore's at home, and I know you know the Chiefs have been playing well. And everybody keeps saying, "Oh, like you know, no nobody's nobody's stopping the Chiefs. They're gonna win the whole thing." Yada yada yada. Um, I don't know. I don't see it playing out like that, but I don't necessarily know that if Baltimore is gonna be the first team to like take them down. I'm not so sure about that. I think, I think since Baltimore, I mean this, I I said this, I said this at the top of the of the show that this is gonna be a really tough one to call, man, a really tough one to call. Um, oh man, a lot of people are gonna be picking the Chiefs, man, because everybody thinks they're they're looking unstoppable. But if there is anybody that's gonna beat them in the AFC, it's gonna be the Ravens, man. And I think I don't know. I don't know, man. It's so tough to call. I think they're and they're giving the Ravens three and a half, probably because they're at home. I think I don't know, man. I think because of that, I, I want to take the Ravens, man. I want to take the Ravens, man. I think Lamar Jackson, he's gonna want to show that he can take his game to the next level. And this is this is a, this is a signature, a marquee matchup for him. This is a this is a signature matchup. If he can get this, it's gonna be one of his uh, signature wins. They call it, you know, a career defining win. And just to just to let him know, you know, like a precursor to what's gonna happen in the playoffs, you know, saying something like, "Okay, yeah, we're definitely gonna see the 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 road to the Super Bowl through the AFC runs through Kansas City." Okay, we get that, but you know, we're gonna make a statement in this game at home, and then we'll see you guys at Arrowhead, because presumably Kansas City looks to be uh, the top seed in the AFC, but we'll see. I mean. Weird things can happen. It is 2020 after all. So a lot of weird shit can happen. It's already happened. So we'll see. All right, guys. So that's uh, all the picks. I don't do uh, the Thursday games, as you're already aware. Um, but, yeah, that, I mean, that was a crazy one. I, I would not have predicted Miami to have won that game, um, you know, the way they did. So that was crazy. Good on good on old man uh, Fitzmagic to get the job done. And, uh, yeah, I mean, good on the journeyman. As long as he doesn't pile up too many wins, I keep uh, the Jets out of a playoff spot. But good on him to, you know, still be finding work in the league and still be productive. So, and still uh, rocking the huge beard, too. So, <laughs> the huge uh, quarantine football beard. All right, guys. So, yeah, those are my picks. Uh, if you want to go over them again, you can always uh, rewind this video, of course. Uh, and, yeah, um, let me just uh, do a have a quick peek here at uh, what's going on with uh, the basketball game and oh it looks like it's now a final uh, 121 108 for the Boston Celtics so it looks like they staved off elimination they're still hanging around um, and they're only down 3-2 in the series now so wow that's kind of lame hopefully that the heat can dust them in six Hopefully. So, all right, looks like uh, my time is running short. So, as always, I want to give uh, a shout out to my wife. The show would not be possible without you. And my baby girl, Sophia, the apple of my eye, my pride and joy. I hope you're watching this. Daddy loves you very much. And I hope you guys continue to watch out there.